Okay, this is part three of our review of uh, radical functions. We've graphed them, we've done transformations, and now we are uh, focusing on solving radical equations such as these in this video. Number 15, please do not try to distribute this five. You can't do that um, in, because the, of the uh, exponent right there. Instead, you need to first divide both sides by five get rid of that 5. Alright, so that is going to give us 6x plus 1 to the 1 fourth power is equal to 2. Now, um, we will do the reciprocal power to get rid of this exponent. So 1 fourth the reciprocal is 4. So we will raise both sides to the fourth power. Now these 4's will cancel each other out. That's why we picked it. So that will give us 6x plus 1, 2 to the 4th power. That's 16. Um, you might not know that off the top of your head. So use your chart. 2 to the 4th power is 16. Because you won't have your TI-30XS multi-view. Um, next, we subtract 1 from both sides. So that will give us 6x is equal to 15. Um, then you want to divide both sides by 6. Alright, um, this is going to reduce a little bit, right? Both of these are divisible by 3. So that's going to give us x is equal to 5 halves. And that is the answer to number 15. All right, number 16 is very similar, so I encourage you to pause the video and try to do it by yourself first. All right, uh, again, do not distribute this 4. You, it has a power, can't do it. Instead, what you want to do is divide both sides by 4. Now, these 4s will cancel out. These 4s will also cancel out. So um, that's going to leave us so far with 7x plus 18 to the 1 half power is equal to x. Now uh, we will do the reciprocal power to make this exponent go away. The reciprocal of 1 half is 2, so I will square both sides of the equation. These twos will cancel each other out, so I will just have 7x plus 18 is equal to x squared. Um, now I see I have an x and an x squared so I'm going to get everything on one side of the equation. I like my x squared to stay positive so I'm going to subtract 7x from both sides and subtract 18 from both sides. Okay so that's going to leave me with 0 equals x squared minus 7x minus 18. Alright, let's try to factor it. x squared is x times x. Um, let's see, 18. Um, let's see, when I look at 18, I think maybe it's uh, 3 times 6, or could be 2 times 9, or 1 times 18. I'm really liking the 2 times 9 because I know that inner plus outer has to equal middle. So I'm shooting for that negative 7. Okay, so let's go with that. 2 times 9. Now, to get negative 7, uh, I would need a positive 2 and a negative 9. Luckily, that will also multiply to give me negative 18. If I set each of these equal to 0, that's going to give me x equals negative 2. Okay, setting this equal to 0 is going to give me x equals 9. Okay, now at least mentally, I need to check both of these to make sure I'm not getting uh, imaginary numbers and such. Um, so if I put negative 2. I have a bad feeling about the negative 2. 
Okay, yeah, let me let's go ahead and check it. Um because the thing is, I'm seeing if I put negative 2 on the right, that's going to make negative 8. And then I have this um, radical, really, uh, equal to a negative number. So right there, that means it's going to be no solution. Well, not no solution, but uh, I can already see by my mental math that um, this is going to be extraneous. All right, but just in case you're not following me, I'm going to do a couple steps out. If I plug this negative 2 back in, all right, uh, I'm going to have 4, and then I have 7 times this negative 2, okay, uh, plus 18, and all of that is to the 1 half power. And on the right hand side, I have 4 times negative 2. So that would make um, 4 times um, negative 14 plus 18 to the 1 half power is equal to negative 8. Okay, so this is going to give me 4. Um, negative 14 plus 18, that's 4. Uh, please understand that the um, 1 half power, like if I have something to the one half power, that's the same thing as the square root. Okay, so this is uh, this is the square root of four is what this is, and the square root of four uh, is two. So this is four times two, and you can already see what's happening. Four times two is positive eight, not negative eight. So that's why the negative two did not work. So if this were a test, um, you would mark uh, in your work. You would mark this as extraneous. And uh, the only answer is the nine. That's the only valid answer. That's it for number sixteen. All right. So be careful with number seventeen. It's immediately time to square both sides, but we have this binomial over here. So remember, when you square a binomial, um, that's going to be x minus 3 times x minus 3, like that. We're going to have to double distribute. Um, meanwhile, over here, we just have our negative 14x plus 2. If you, um, <clears throat> so bring this down. So I have negative 14x plus 2 equals. If you double distribute this, you know, I'm talking about x times x, x times negative 3, negative 3x, and um, negative 3 times negative 3, that's going to give you x squared minus 6x plus 9. Now, I see I have x squared and x, so I need to get 0 on one side. So I'm going to add 14x to both sides and subtract 2 from both sides. So that will give me 0 is equal to x squared plus 8x um, plus 7. So let's try to factor this. If ever it did not factor, we would simply use the quadratic formula. So that would be x and x, and 7 times 1, and plus and plus. If I set each of these equal to 0, um, that's going to give me, need to change colors, that's going to give me x equals negative 7. x equals negative 1. Okay, so I'm going to mentally plug these back in to uh, check them. So if I put in a negative 7, um, you know what, I don't know what 7 times 14 is. 7 times 14 is 98. So I'd have 98 plus 2, by the way, it'd be a positive 98 because negative times negative is positive. So 98 plus 2, that's 100. 
square root would make 10. Okay, positive 10. If I put my negative 7 right here, uh-oh, negative 7 minus 3 would be negative 10. So uh, that's a fail. So that means this one is extraneous. What about the negative 1? Let's try that out. If I put in negative 1 right here, that would make this positive 14. Um, positive 14 plus 2 is 16. 16, uh, the square root of 16, of course, is 4. So I'm getting a positive 4 here. If I put a negative 1 right here, that's negative 1 minus 3 is negative 4. Again, not the same. So again, this is also extraneous. So both of my possible solutions turned out to be extraneous. Um, so what, what am I going to say then? Uh, I'm going to say no solution. No solution. So hopefully you're seeing how important it is that you check your answers. All right, number 18, it's time to do that reciprocal power to both sides. So the reciprocal of 1 half is 2. These 2's will cancel each other out. So that is going to leave me with x plus 4 is equal to 36. Subtract 4 from both sides. So x is equal to 32. Okay, and that works out just fine. If I put 32 in there, I've got 32 plus 4 is 36, and 1 half power is the same as square root, so square root of 36 is 6. Do not distribute the 4. You cannot distribute when there's an exponent. Instead, we want to divide both sides by 4. Okay, those will cancel out. So that will leave you with x minus 3 to the 1 half power is equal to 2. All right, now I can get rid of this by doing the reciprocal power to both sides. So I will square both sides. That way these will cancel out. So that's going to leave me with x minus 3 is equal to 4 then I will add 3 to both sides and so that's going to give me x equals 7 <laughs> okay do not distribute the 4 there's a power here so you can't do that instead you need to divide both sides by 4 like this so that is going to give you these fours cancel out, so you have x minus 12 to the one-third power is equal to negative 4. Now it's time to do the reciprocal power. The reciprocal of one-third is 3. So I will do the third power on both sides. These will cancel. All right, so that is going to leave me with x minus 12 is equal to negative 64. Now, 4 to the third power. <clears throat> I know it in my head, but if you didn't, use the chart. 4 to the third power is 64. Um, and since it was negative, it'll be negative 64. When you raise a negative number to an odd power, it stays negative. All right, if it were an even power, it would turn positive. Anyway, to get x by itself, I will need to add 12 to both sides. So that will give me x equals negative 52. Okay, and you should plug it back in, but that one works out just fine. All right, I'm gonna go ahead and stop the video here. Um, the next problem, uh, we're going to go back to graphing radical functions, so that's completely different. So this is a good place to st stop the video.
Alright, I'll see you on the next video. Continuing.